welcome to your fifth R tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to take a little bit of a break from vectors and I'm going to show you how to get help on R when you're working with R on your own. So let me just dive in with an example. To Let's say that you were using a function and you didn't couldn't remember what that function did or you couldn't remember all the details or you couldn't remember if there's or you didn't know if there were any extra arguments. There's a really, really easy way in R to find that information out. All you need to do is type question, uh, question mark followed by the name of the function. And in this example, I'm going to go ahead and use the sequence function, seq. And it's a, it's a function that we learned immediately in the previous lesson, lesson number four. So I'm going to go ahead and use it again, seq. And I'm going to send it to the console. And as you can see in the lower right hand side, this new tab popped up that we had never seen that we uh, haven't seen before in these videos. It's uh, the help tab over here, and we can see the name of this function is sequence generation. Now I'm going to go down through this documentation, and one nice thing about R is it actually has great online documentation, and a lot of these uh, a lot of this information on each of these functions is going to be pretty consistent across um, uh, across most of the functions that you're going to come across and use in R. The uh, first section is description, and that what that does is it gives you a brief overview on what that function does uh, without going into too much detail. The second section is the usage function, and that gives you a really brief idea on how to use this function, when to use this function, what kind of information are you supposed to put into this function in order to use it. Going down is the arguments section, and this is a little bit more detail. It tells you what uh, information actually has to go inside your function. Recall that a function, what we do is we type the function name, left parentheses, right parentheses, and within those parentheses is where we actually put our arguments in. So this gives you a little bit more detail on what arguments to uh, put in and a little bit more information on it. But it's really the section down here, um, the detail section, where it really, really delves into the nitty gritty about how this function works, exactly what it does, what methods it uses to calculate. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes you like having the details, and sometimes you only like the really brief, high-level description. So, uh, depending on what you need, you if you only need the really brief overview on okay, what arguments do I need to use this function? Well, those are the uh, sections immediately in the top. And this detail section is if that's not quite good enough, if you actually really need to know, you know, uh, how the sausage was made, so to speak, then this is what that detail section will tell you here. Um, but that's not quite it. If you scroll down a little bit more, there is this value section. Functions always return a value. And this section tells you whether it's going to be an integer or a, uh, or a number or a character string or some other kind of information. That's what it's going to tell you here in this value section. A lot of times it's very important. Uh, there's also a section on any relevant references that apply to this function. There is also, and this is actually a, a very useful section, this C also. What that'll do is it uh, provides documentation to related functions. And as you can see, there's another function in there that should look a little bit familiar, actually more than one that should look familiar. Uh, there's that colon symbol, and I won't click it, but uh, take my word for it. If you click that colon symbol, it'll take you to, the, uh, to that little shortcut that I explained before where you type one colon ten, and it'll give you all the all the values between one and ten as a vector. Um, it'll explain a little bit more about that function there. You'll notice immediately to the right is that REP function. Again, another function that we learned in that last lesson. And at the very bottom, uh, one of the uh, one of the most useful sections, in fact, one of my favorite sections, is examples. A lot of times, it's one thing to read the documentation. It's one thing to actually see it in action. And what's great about these example sections is that you can often paste them right into your R code, execute them, and see exactly what they do and try and figure out what that function does from there. And I, uh, I often like to do that as an, instead of, um, in addition to actually reading the documentation. So what I'm gonna do is, this should look familiar down here, this one that I'm highlighting, this SEQ, left parentheses one comma six by three. So what we can do is it's ready to be copied and paste it. I'm going to paste it up here in the source, execute it, and what's nice about this is we can see exactly how this 
works, how this function works. You'll also notice, and if you recall from the sequence video that I, excuse me, from lesson four when I showed you before, there's even some functionality to the sequence function that I really didn't show you. You'll notice this first line right here where it says SEQ and the first argument is zero, comma one, comma length out equals 11. That's an additional functionality to the sequence function that I just didn't uh, explain to you before. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it, paste it, and execute it. And there you have it. And you'll notice that in a lot of these functions in R, a lot of times they have these hidden functionalities or hidden arguments that you just don't typically need to use. Um, but sometimes special situations that come up where you uh, like to use it, that's where this documentation becomes really, really powerful. There might be some sort of uh, obscure little quirk in the formula or some, uh, some method that you're not aware of that the documentation will reveal to you right away. So it's extremely, extremely helpful. Another way to get to this help menu is to simply type H-E-L-P and in, within the parentheses type the name of the uh, function you need help on. I'm just doing that right now. You can see, uh, see in the source I typed it and sent it to the console and it just brought me back to this uh, sequence generation documentation. Uh, a lot of times you might feel like this window on the lower right hand side is a little bit too small. What's nice about our studio is there is this other icon right here where it has an arrow pointing to a window and if you click that what it'll do is it'll open it up in a new web page and it might be a little bit easier for you to read and you can scroll down and you can see everything's the same it's just been blown up a little bit and it's a little bit easier to read uh, in fact and I'm gonna just end it with one more note if you notice at the very bottom of the page there's a section here that I haven't really touched on yet it's uh, it leads you to an index that shows you all our, our documentation. I'm going to go ahead and click this link here just to show you. And as you can see, there are tons and tons of functions in R. So many, in fact, that there's no way I would be able to write a video and explain all of them. And in fact, uh, a lot of these I haven't even used myself. So uh, just to give you an idea on how, much, uh, how many functions there are in R, how much functionality there is, um, you can see it right there. And this is only one, uh, one particular package. R is uh, well known for having um, uh, hundreds of different packages that do tons of different jobs. So oftentimes if you're struggling with a particular task, there's, uh, there's R documentation out there that'll, uh, that'll help you be able to find it. It's just a matter of finding it and going out and looking for it. So that's all I have for you for this video. I'll uh, see you guys next time.